All right, guys, it's Jalan, and today we're working on our Ashes Crash Course for caravans. Big thing here is a lot of people have been asking, what are caravans? Uh, why would I use a caravan, and how do they function? These are all important questions. Caravans, first and foremost, are rolling PvP zones. There is no corruption if you attack a caravan. We're going to talk about the PvP part a little more in just a second. Caravans are used to transport large quantities of goods. You can move gatherables, processed goods, and mob drops in caravans. Now, I don't know of any reason why you couldn't put weapons, armors, potions, food into a caravan. The question would be, why would you want to? Because unless you're corrupted, you don't drop finished goods when you die. If you're not familiar with the death and dying aspects of Ashes, there's a link to Ashes 101 in the corner, and I have a direct link in the description to death and dying, so you can get caught up on what you drop and what different flagging states. So the big thing about caravans, you use them because your caravan is going to carry 10 times what a mule carries. And a mule is going to carry 10 times what you carry, which means your caravan is going to carry 100 times your backpack. So if you can carry 100 iron ore in your backpack, your mule can carry 1,000. The caravan is going to be able to carry 10,000. This is going to be an economy of scale. You make one trip with a higher risk that your caravan gets destroyed, but you get a much bigger reward because you save a lot of time and you bring a lot of goods to an area. Now, when you want to launch a caravan, this is all new information for 2022. Caravans are only launched at stage three nodes or higher. Because at stage three, there's a caravansary, which is a default building that comes with the node. The caravansary is not one of the mayor constructible plots that the mayor has to choose. If you're not familiar with that, upper right hand corner will talk about nodes at stage three. So basically, you're going to go to the caravansary, you're going to engage with the interface, and then you're going to load parts into the menu. Any part that you can't load is going to be uh, filled in with a basic part. If you have a missing slot, you're just going to get the worst quality generic fill-in. Now, the parts in their purpose, you're going to be adding things like axles, uh, the chassis. You're going to be adding uh, beasts of burden mounts in there. You're going to be rolling in NPC guards and wheels and other things. And this is going to add to your caravan's armor and hit points and damage mitigation its cargo capacity, its maneuverability, its speed, and its turning speed and radius. The important thing here is that not every caravan is going to be built exactly the same, which is going to add a lot of intrigue into, can we catch that caravan? Is it pretending to go slower than its max speed? Uh, is it a fast caravan with a low storage capacity? Or is it a lumbering caravan with a lot of armor? These are going to be the things you need to try to figure out before you attack a caravan. Another thing that's going to be included with the parts is crates. Crates are how much a uh, storage a caravan has. And it takes the crates to transfer from the caravan to the point of storage. Uh, after the caravansary, you're going to unload into your point of storage. So these are going to be things that they uh, that we're going to be testing in Alpha 2. Uh, a lot of testing uh, for the caravans need to be done. Now, with the actual launching and arriving, when you when loaded, when you finish loading a caravan, you're going to initiate the caravan. And this is going to take you to a bird's eye view of the map. And you're going to pick a spot in the radius somewhere between 100 and 150 meters away from the node. And then your node, your caravan and you are going to teleport out there. And this is designed so that people can't sit at the caravansary all day and watch the caravans get loaded and then follow them out. Sure, 100 to 150 meters away from a smaller node, people are probably going to be able to see the majority of it. As the nodes get larger, remember a metropolis is a half a kilometer in, a, in radius. Um, you're, that's going to be a lot of different areas you can teleport your caravan out to. And also when you're trying to get to the destination, you do not need to get inside of the node. You do not need to get to the actual caravansary. You just have to get past the delivery line. So a little graphic right here, what this is going to look like. Here's your, here's your world map and you're going to leave this town. So you're ready and you pop out to that bird's eye view and you pick this spot right here. You're going to put your caravan and then two to three minutes, two to five minutes, depending on the upgrade levels of the caravansary, your caravan will be teleported out there. And then you travel across the map, but you'll notice you do not have to get into the city itself. Once you cross that red line, it's the finish line. Your caravan will be secured. It will be safe. No longer vulnerable to PVP will be escorted into the caravansary and then you can unload the crates to the points of storage.
Now, I talked about how caravans are rolling PvP zones. There is no death penalty included with uh, caravan attacking or defending except for the gear degradation. So you're not going to be uh, accumulating negative XP, and you as a attacker or defender will not drop items, of course, subject to change. When you encounter a caravan, you're going to be given the option to attack it, defend it, or ignore it. To uh, defend it, caravan owners are going to be able to load a tangible reward into their caravan. And so if you join as a defender and you're one of the first defenders, then you're going to get whatever that reward is. You have to join as a caravan defender before a certain point. There's not going to be people just running out to the caravan as it's about to hit the finish line and hitting join as a defender to progress their trees. Um, when destroyed, the caravan does not drop the goods inside the caravan. It actually drops redemption certificates. You have to scoop these and you have to take these back to the launch point. Now, this is one thing I know a lot of people disagree with. A lot of people talk about how they wish that the caravans would just drop whatever it is the caravans are going to drop and then let people figure out what they can steal, what they can scoop, what they can loot. Maybe have the, a caravan launch guy right there so you can spawn another caravan in the world. Leave a comment below on how you'd like to see the, the caravan system work as far as just the final drop piece. Do you like the idea of the redemption certificates, or do you want that to just be a pile of loot that people have to pick up what they can carry? Now, a huge thing here that I hear people ask me all the time, what is the risk to the attacker? Everybody feels like the, the caravan owner is absorbing all of the risk and that the attacker doesn't have any. Well, the big thing here is if you attack a caravan and you fail, you're going to affect your PvP season rank. That's going to be a failure against you. It's like taking a loss. The other thing is there is a caravan defender and caravan brigand quest tree. Uh, if you keep failing, I don't, if you keep failing when you attack, then you're going to lower both your PVP season and your tree progression. So it's not going to be something that you're going to be uh, launching or attacks on every single caravan you see in the hope you win, unless you want to accumulate a lot of losses. Now, somebody did ask me, can you load a fake caravan just to lure in PvP people? It's a great question. Uh, the, right now, the answer is yes. You'd be absorbing the risk of the parts and any caravan launch fee. But it's going to be interesting to see if Intrepid has a minimum quantity, a minimum load before you can send out a caravan to stop people from creating bait caravans. Now, there are some different types of caravans. One of them is a uh, trade route. These are mayoral caravans. Uh, in order to establish trade routes, um, you have to load up a caravan. The mayor has to load up a caravan and launch it. This is going to be an incentive for the citizens of that node to defend that caravan because it's going to open up trade routes, um, trade status. Uh, if you want know, to more, know more about that, so do I. We don't have that answer yet. Other thing you're going to have is the castle tax wagons. Every week, every node is going to launch a wagon full of the castle taxes to send to the monarch. Citizens of the castle region cannot attack their own castle wagons. You're uh, obligated to try to help defend them and get them there. And up there in the corner is a video on the castles. It's an older video. I'm in the process of reworking it. I'll put the new one there when it's done. There are some advantages in making sure your monarch gets their taxes. There's also personal caravans. You just want to move stuff from place to place. Um, so there's a, there's a lot there, and there's a lot we don't know about, but those are the three types. Somebody asked about the caravans versus trade ships. Trade ships have a much higher cargo capacity than a caravan, but the trade-off is uh, trade ships must move harbor to harbor. The harbors function like caravanseries, and the big part here is that trade ships are ships with ship armaments. They are going to have all of those ship slots, weapons, defenses, utility that a ship has. This is going to be different from a caravan. A caravan will transition between land and water and then back from water to land. Um, they are vulnerable while they are making this transition. This is like floating your uh, wagon across the river in like Oregon Trail. Um, you, these are caravans. These are not ships. We do not know what defenses they will have. They might not have any ship to ship weapons. Uh, we're waiting for more information. Finally, caravans and freeholds. Caravans are launched in the node. Freeholds have the best processing. So the question is, in the past, we knew we could launch a caravan from any point of storage. They've kind of moved away from that. Um, I talked to Steven, 
And uh, he said, as it stands currently, launching a caravan is done from the caravansary and may then be driven by the player to the destination. For Alpha 2, we'll be testing how our new crate system interacts with freehold storage and caravans. So don't have an answer for you today, but this is something that Stephen has indicated is marked for Alpha 2 testing. And with that said, guys, that is it for today. I wanted to get an updated caravan video. I know a lot of people are going to have a lot of questions about caravans. If you do, leave a comment below. I will answer every question. Question I can and if I can't if I don't have an answer I will do my best to try to get a soundbite from Steven uh, for those of you that like DMCA free music you'll notice that looking good looking guy down there in the corner that is uh, PGN music PGN music is my personal DMCA free copyright free record label if you have projects if you need music for school or work or business or whatever uh, you can feel free to use anything on there if you need to get a specific track just contact me I can get it to you uh, if you want to know more about ashes to creation ashes 101.com is my website I try to maintain that um, as a textbook and a lecture series and finally I stream three times a week if you have a question swing by my twitch show we can talk about whatever questions you have and then that show drives other videos until next time you guys take care and I will be working on the open seas video next so that will be the next one you see you guys take care and I'll see you next time Thank you